Lawyers create in words. We don't make a thing you can touch other than words on a piece of paper. Legalese is the term used to describe the old-fashioned and technical writing style often used by lawyers. In this edition of Legal Briefs, let me tell you where legalese comes from, when to use it, and more importantly, when not to use it, and why it might lead to Donald Trump beating impeachment. So to begin, here is an example of legalese actually found in a deed that I found online. In witness whereof the parties hereto have set their hand to these presents as a deed on the day, month, and year herein before mentioned. And what does all that legalese gobbledygook mean? Signed on date. So why not just draft a legal document the simpler way, signed on date? Lawyers write this way for two reasons. First, our legal system is based on students, which means cases from the past spell out the current laws, and therefore, lawyers often quote from cases 50, 100 years old. I once quoted from a case that was from England from the 17th century. So because we quote from old cases, that very formal old-fashioned style of writing tends to creep into our legal writing, especially the use of Latin. As a quick aside, my favorite Latin legal term is habeas corpus, and it literally means produce or bring the body. And it's used when a person is being held in prison and their lawyer wants them brought in front of the court to determine why they're being held. I like to use it with my kids when they're in the bathroom for a long time. I say, hey, I'm giving you a writ of habeas corpus. Anyways, the second reason for legalese, all of the heretofores and wherefores in legal writing is that it allows us not to have to mention things all over again. When drafting a contract, you can't assume anything. So instead of listing all the people who are party to a contract all over again at the end, you use parties here and before mentioned. Wherefore just means you are beginning a conclusion. So actually all of the jargon is kind of a time saver. So that's where legalese comes from. Now, when should you use it yourself? And more importantly, when should you not use it? Legalese in general is useful when you wish your writing to carry authority and carry a high level of formality. Just take it easy with it. For example, you are writing an employee handbook of regulations for your company. It's more authoritative to write all heretofore mentioned dress code regulations are in full force and effect except on Fridays, in which day all employees may dress in jeans. It sounds a little more formal and, and authoritative than Friday is jeans day. The major downside to legalese is that it sucks all the passion and emotion out of your language. For that reason, I stay clear of any Latin-based or legal terms during opening statements. I would never say at the opening, at this point, the vehicle driven by Ms. Smith impacted the vehicle and Mr. Jones was the occupant. If you want to lose, that's how you start your opening statement. But it's better to say, that's when Ms. Smith smashed her truck into Mr. Jones' car. Good old Anglo-Saxon words carry emotion and impact. And that finally brings me to President Trump and why word choice might save his presidency from impeachment. As I filmed this, the allegations in the press are framed as the president proposing a quid pro quo with the Ukraine, a tit for tat or an exchange. The word choice is unfortunate or fortunate, depending on your political leanings, because no emotion or evil intent is portrayed by the word quid pro quo. It's a benign Latin phrase, and therefore we are less likely, the public, public is less likely to get on the impeachment bad wagon because of that word choice. If instead the Democrats or maybe the press had latched on, latched on to the word bribery, or maybe headlined that the president threatened withholding of aid, they would have a much better chance because they used the word bribery and threat, which carry negative emotional connotations rather than the, dis the dispassionate word quid pro quo. And in any case, certainly asking for a quid pro quo with the Ukraine doesn't seem like the high crime and misdemeanors that the Constitution demands for impeachment. And there you have it, the basis for legalese, when not to use it, and how it just might save Trump's presidency. Thanks for watching.